so hello students uh, welcome to lecture 4 of this uh, uh, video lecture series uh, 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 up till now we have already studied about the introduction to VLSI technology in the last lecture I have also introduced the uh, CMOS uh, the basics of CMOS uh, which you have already studied in your second year so that was important so I have already explained that and uh, now uh, I would like to ex uh, we will go through the MOS structure fine so we will go deep into the uh, analysis of uh, CMOS device uh, we will start with the MOS structure fine metal oxide semiconductor structure so let's see so let's start with the metal oxide semiconductor structure fine so we will be starting with the metal oxide semiconductor fine so just let's start yeah we will be starting the lecture with metal oxide semiconductor fine so we call it as MOS fine and uh, actually uh, you all have studied MOSFET instead of MOS you have studied MOSFET fine so uh, so you have studied only about the MOSFET fine in your second year but here uh, we are starting the uh, syllabus we are starting the uh, CMOS design uh, with MOS structure fine so we will study first the MOS structure then we will study the transistor which is made of MOS so what is MOS MOS is metal oxide semiconductor fine so let's see what is MOS uh, just a second so this is your MOS structure this is your MOS structure fine and in the MOS structure uh, this red this red belongs to the gate uh, actually I have told you in the last classes that the gate can be of polysilicon and can be of metal so here uh, for the purpose of introduction we will consider this gate made up of aluminium as a metal fine then we have a substrate we have a substrate a silicon substrate fine and it is doped with p type uh, with the pentavalent impurity fine uh, pentavalent impurity is also known as uh, i'm sorry not pentavalent impurity trivalent impurity that's why it became an p type fine so it is doped with a trivalent impurity and a trivalent impurity is also known as acceptor uh, type of impurity fine because it accepts the electron extra electron and creates a hole that's why it becomes p type fine so this is a p type material and then uh, a very thin oxide layer this uh, this is very thin oxide layer fine which is sio2 so all these things we have already studied in the last class uh, let's move forward uh, let's see what is the amount of doping which is required to create a substrate it is under order of 10 to the power 15 to 10 to the power 16 per centimeter cube fine so in one centimeter cube volume uh, 10 to the power 15 to 10 to the power 16 atoms of acceptor ions of acceptor material is doped into this to obtain the p type silicon fine now let's move forward so i call this system as gate oxide and then silicon uh, fine so this makes metal gate is made of metal fine that's why i call it as metal so metal oxide semiconductor silicon is a semiconductor so this is a MOS system this is known as MOS system fine later in the uh, this unit itself you will able to understand this uh, MOS system acts as a capacitor kind of capacitor the reason is uh, what do you need for a capacitor for a capacitor to form you need uh, two conducting layers two layers which are conducting that means they are a good conductor or uh, they can conduct uh, electricity through it and a non-conducting layer between them that forms a capacitance so similarly in a MOS system this is conducting your semiconductor is also conducting 
but the silicon oxide is behaving like an insulator that's why the system also sometimes behave like a capacitor so we'll understand all these things as uh, as it goes on fine so uh, this is the MOS structure now let's move forward so uh, we will start our analysis what we do uh, I let I will tell you what how, how this lecture will go on first we'll study uh, the uh, basic uh, uh, basic uh, what we call it basic equations uh, behind the uh, electrons holes the charge carriers uh, in this uh, metal oxide semiconductor system MOS system fine so uh, you might have studied about the mass action law so just have a look at that mass action law if you remember in your electronic devices and circuit cores you have studied about mass action law that is n p equals to n i square fine so what is n and what is p n is the number of holes a uh, number of uh, electrons or the density of electrons concentration of electrons we also call it as concentration of concentration of electrons and p is concentration of holes and n i n i is intrinsic concentration i think you all know this as a electronics engineer you all know this this is in intrinsic concentration so ma what does mass action law says mass action law says that even this is for int intrinsic uh, semiconductor you know what is intrinsic semiconductor a semiconductor which is not doped with external impurity fine so intrinsic semiconductor the the uh, il number of the density of electrons when multiplied by the density of uh, holes in any semiconductor it will be always the square of intrinsic concentration fine this is what mass action law says and it is also valid when you dope it with p type or n type fine so for example if uh, here here you have doped it with p type fine so when it is doped with p type what happened the number of uh, holes the number of holes nearly became equal to the acceptor impurity fine what is this acceptor this is the concentration of acceptor impurity which you are doping into this fine now each acceptor atom provides one hole that's why the number of holes became almost equal to the acceptor impurity fine now if you calculate the number of electrons in this uh, substrate then it would be something like this n equals to see mass action law will always follow so that means n multiplied by the p will be ni square fine now when you calculate the number of electrons from here it would be ni square divided by number of holes and number of holes is the acceptor ion impurity fine so what i wanted to say that mass action law will always follow even if you dope it with p type uh, dope it as a p type or n type substrate so fine so you have doped it with p type substrate so this is the number of electrons which are present in the p type substrate please don't get confused the, their uh, then there is num electrons in the p type substrate as a minority charge carrier so in a semiconductor which is p type i am talking about this bluish region this bluish region is a substrate so in this p type substrate the number of holes are definitely the uh, number of holes are definitely the uh, majority charge carriers however the uh, holes are the majority charge carriers but electrons are also present there and these electrons are behaving like minority charge carriers and as you go forward you will see that these number of electrons these electrons will have a will have a great effect in conduction of uh, conduction of charge carriers in MOSFET let's see that fine so let's move forward and uh, we will look at the uh, band diagram of the MOS structure we will start this with the band diagram fine so I think in your electronic devices uh, electronic devices and circuits uh, syllabus in the second year you might have studied about the band diagram so I will start with that band diagram what we will do we will draw the structure of band diagram of a MOS a metal oxide semiconductor this 
this much material we will draw the uh, uh, the uh, band diagram and then let's see what is uh, what is the basics of band diagram we will clear some basics of the band diagram and then we'll move forward fine so let's go to the band diagram so uh, this is the band diagram uh, just a second yeah this is the band diagram in front of you yeah this is the band diagram just a second so this is the energy band diagram of a silicon in front of you fine so let's analyze this what is this energy band diagram and how it is made fine let's analyze this so this is your energy band diagram and we have uh, four bands in it fine so what does the energy band diagram signify uh, see, see. Uh, i know you have all have studied about energy band diagram there's no confusion in that but but you all must be clear what does energy band diagram signify energy band diagram signify the levels of energy which is present inside a material i'm talking about any material fine you might have studied about the energy band diagram of silicon only the semiconductor only fine so in this course we will study the energy band diagram of entire mos structure or entire mosfet also fine so energy band diagram is a diagram to represent the levels of energy in any material or any device fine so this is how it is represented from lowest level from lowest level to highest level fine from lowest level to highest level means the lowest energy will be represented here and the highest energy will be represented here fine so this is the energy band diagram of a silicon this is the energy band diagram of a silicon substrate of a silicon substrate fine this is the energy band diagram of a silicon substrate now let's see what are the uh, what are the band band different energy bands present in this fine let's see so uh, we have a valence band here fine we have a conduction band and then a free space i believe you must have studied about the intrinsic form level or the intrinsic state we also call it as intrinsic form level fine so i'll tell you what is that so uh, there are let us consider there are three le four levels here the free space the conduction band the valence band and the fermi potential fermi level fine so what is valence band valence band is the energy uh, energy representation of valence electron fine what is conduction band the amount of energy which is uh, present the amount of energy uh, which is present in a free electron fine and what is this e0 e0 is the amount of energy with a electron in the free space that means it came out of the uh, system for example this much energies this much uh, energy by, uh, this much energy level are present in the silicon and this is the energy when this is the amount of energy when the electron the charge carrier the, by either the electron or hole came out of the system fine we should know that uh, i think uh, this you might have not studied in your electronic courses but this is uh, what uh, this is the amount of uh, the energy level associated with a charge carrier which came out of the system fine because what what, what is happening uh, if you have a semiconductor and you provide energy to it by any means fine then what will happen either the electron may go in uh, charge carrier may go in this direction or in this direction so the amount of energy the amount please listen it carefully the amount of energy which is required to get electron out of this what i call this out of the system or maybe if it is silicon out of the silicon that amount of energy is this fine and why i call it as a free space because it is coming out of the silicon you got it because it is coming out of the silicon now this is uh, so i have talked about the valence band energy the conduction band energy and the free space energy that is e0 fine okay? so uh, these are the three different energies now let's talk about the intrinsic formi level 
Fermi level. You might have uh, studied about the Fermi level n number of times in your electronics courses. Fine. So, what is Fermi level? Fermi level, as the definition says, Fermi level is the level, energy level, where the probability of finding an electron is highest. This is the definition of intrinsic Fermi level. Fine. I am again repeating. The Fermi level means the this is the level of energy where the uh, probability of finding a charge carrier is highest probability of finding probability of finding a charge carrier probability of finding a charge carrier fine and what kind of charge carrier it can be either hole or it can be either electron both fine and for a particular semiconductor like silicon or germanium it is always in the middle of it is always in the middle of conduction band and valence band so it is always in the middle if you can see this is the conduction band this is the valence band and this is the intrinsic Fermi level so it is always in the middle of uh, the uh, between the conduction band and the valence band exactly at the middle of conduction band and valence band fine so this is the intrinsic formula level right why do you call it as intrinsic because the material which is yet not doped which is yet not doped is known as intrinsic semiconductor fine that's why the fermi level which is associated with intrinsic semiconductor is known as intrinsic formula level this is known as intrinsic formula level fine now uh, this remove formula level if you can see uh, this this one this is the actual formula level of a p-type semiconductor now you go to now you come to the definition of p-type or n-type semiconductor right now you are trying to draw the energy level of a n-type or p-type semiconductor up till now when we have only studied this level this level this level and this level ignoring this level then we are talking about just a semiconductor because in a intrinsic semiconductor the fermi energy level is exactly at the middle of the conduction band and valence band now we are talking about the p type semiconductor so what happens in a p type semiconductor in a p type semiconductor you dope it with a acceptor type of purity so it becomes p type fine when it becomes p type the fermi level the fermi level will go downwards the fermi level will go downwards towards the valence band and what happens when you dope it with a uh, uh, pentavalent impurity that means if you wanted to make it as a n type semiconductor in that case the intrinsic level will move towards the conduction band this is what happens actually what happens fine so uh, now what has happened the intrinsic formula level has moved towards the this is the new intrinsic formula level initially the formula level was here fine now the formula level has been shifted towards the valence band fine and the formula level this is the new formula level and we call this formula level as uh, the energy associated associated with this formula level we call it as efp fine EF denotes Fermi level and P denotes the P-type material. Initially, the Fermi level was EF. Energy associated with the intrinsic uh, semiconductor is EI or EF. We also call it as EF. Fine. So we have two terms: EFP, that is the energy of new for, uh, of uh, new Fermi level, and EF, the energy of intrinsic Fermi level. Fine. Now, there is a way that to calculate the potential. the potential between the fermi levels these are the two fermi levels this one and this one there is a way to calculate the potential between the two fermi levels what is potential potential the amount of energy difference between these two fermi levels between this level and this level there is a way to calculate the amount of energy difference between this level and this level fine right? and how to calculate that let's see we can calculate this amount of fermi level difference as phi f we call it as phi f so phi f is what phi f is the fermi potential please remember these terms 
because I will not repeat these terms again and again. I will not explain these terms again and again, although this would be repeated in all my lectures. So, Fermi potential. What is Fermi potential? The potential difference between intrinsic Fermi level and the Fermi level. I will repeat it again. What is intrinsic Fermi level? Fermi level associated with the intrinsic semiconductor. This Fermi level is the Fermi level of P type semiconductor. Fine. So, the difference between the energies or the potential of these two levels is known as Fermi potential. You can calculate the Fermi potential as phi f equals to the difference between the energy, the difference between energy of both the uh, both the Fermi level E F minus E I divided by charge on a single uh, electron that is Q. So this is how you can calculate the potential difference between the Fermi energy level and the intrinsic energy level. In this case, the Fermi energy level we again uh, calculate it as phi F P. This is just for the intrinsic semiconductor. Now we calculate the same thing for X, uh, for P type semiconductor. Fine. So for a P type semiconductor, the uh, the difference between this level and this level we call it as phi fp please remember we call it as phi fp phi means potential and potential of what potential of energy level between uh, the this fermi level and this fermi level so we call it as phi fp and phi fp equals to energy of fermi level energy of fermi level minus energy of energy of p type fermi level i'm sorry energy of p type fermi level and energy of fermi level original fermi level that is ef we call it as ef divided by q so this is the fermi this we call it as fermi potential please remember this is the fermi potential and what is that the difference between the two fermi levels the intrinsic one and the new one this is how you calculate the fermi potential fine now you can uh, also calculate the fermi potential you can also calculate the fermi potential as uh, just a second you can also calculate the fermi potential as yeah you can also calculate the fermi potential as phi f equals to uh, for example if you are calculating it for p type semiconductor phi f p equals to kt by q ln Ni by Na for P type semiconductor. What is Ni? Intrinsic concentration. Na acceptor type imp impurity concentration. Charge on an electron. Fine. And then T is the current temperature. K is the Boltzmann constant. This also gives the exact value of the Fermi potential. Fine. What happens if you do the same for, uh, let's say, N type semiconductor? For the case of n type semiconductor, it is kT by Q ln nd by ni. If you remember, this is how you could predict the Fermi potential for n type semiconductor. Now, a question may arise in your mind that why we are calculating the Fermi potentials. This Fermi potential will be very very helpful when we, you will calculate, uh, when you will analyze that how this MOS structure is behaving. This Fermi potential will be very helpful. Fine. So let's move forward. Uh, I believe one of the one of the energy level is still I have not made you understand. Let's see which form which is that. Mm. Yeah. Just a second. Yeah. Let's see which Fermi level I am talking about. Yeah. Uh, sorry, the energy level which I am talking about. So, this is that energy level. Um, yeah, the free space energy level. Free space energy level. So, uh, the amount of energy which is required, please understand the amount of energy which is required to move an electron out of the conduction band. Out of the conduction band means towards the, out of the system. I have already told you that if I am using a semiconductor and if a charge carriers move out of the semiconductor 
for the purpose of uh, current conduction then the amount of energy required to move that electron out of the system i call i all i uh, i'm calling this as a system just because of the fact that it can be any any material this is valid for any material fine so let's me let me call it as a system or uh, as a semiconductor let's just call it as a semiconductor so the amount of energy required to move the charge carrier out of the semiconductor will be known as the electron affinity will be known as the electron affinity or the charge affinity or we also call it as charge affinity or electron affinity of silicon because i'm talking about the silicon here i'm talking about the silicon this is the energy band diagram of silicon so it is represented by q's i and this is what this is the amount of energy amount of energy required to move required to move required to move the electron present in the conduction band it's already in the conduction band required to move the electron out of the silicon into the free space into the free space so this is what we call it as electron affinity fine i call it as electron affinity please remember i call it as electron affinity i call it as electron affinity fine so this is uh, the electron affinity and this please remember this remember two three things this uh, new fermi potential uh, i'm sorry this fermi level this is fermi level this is the energy of fermi level don't call it as fermi potential uh, this is fermi potential fine remember the fermi potential what is the difference between energy of uh, intrinsic fermi level and new fermi level and also remember the electron affinity which is the energy required to move the electron out of the silicon that is uh, out from the conduction band fine so do remember these two things that would be useful uh, in the later stage fine so let's move forward now what we'll do we will analyze the overall energy band diagram overall energy band diagram of what overall energy band diagram of entire semiconductor uh, i'm sorry entire metal oxide semiconductor mos structure fine you know we have a mos structure uh, the silicon substrate uh, just a second everything got messed up just a second so we have a silicon substrate then a oxide layer on this and then a metal layer and then a metal layer fine so this is what this is a mos structure this is your gate this is your substrate and this is known as mos structure so what we'll do we will draw the energy band diagram of this entire mos structure fine and let's see how the energy band diagram behaves let's continue so uh so let's see the energy band diagram of a complete mod structure just a second yeah this is the energy band diagram of a complete mod structure this is the energy band diagram of a complete mod structure fine so uh let's analyze this what is this uh this much is metal and then this is oxide and this is semiconductor so we call it as mos metal oxide semiconductor fine so uh this is metal so what i'm what is metal uh, i'm talking about the gate gate which is formed of metal and what type of metal aluminum fine so let's see how it is made uh the metal uh, metal is uh, having a fermi potential metal is having a fermi potential of so uh the fermi potential of metal uh although it's not fermi potential uh, you can call it as overall energy required to get electron out of the fermi level fine 
see there is no fermi level in metal just because of the fact that the conduction band and valence band both are overlapping in metal if you if you remember the conduction band and valence band all are uh, both are uh, overlapping so you can't predict the fermi level fine but still the amount of energy we can calculate the amount of energy which is required to get a charge carrier out of the metal that is 4.1 electron volt so i call it as fermi potential of metal what is this fermi potential of metal okay and that is equals to 4.1 electron volt i calculated in the form of electron volt fine then we have the oxide layer and what is oxide that is silicon oxide sio2 that is an insulator and uh, see although it's an insulator but the amount of energy which is required to get the electron out of the conduction band that is electron affinity is only 0.95 electron volt only 0.95 electron volt is required to get the electron out of the oxide so do you think it will conduct but no it won't conduct just because of the fact that the amount of band gap between the conduction and valence band is so huge that the valence electron will never go to into the conduction band even if you allow apply a very amount of high voltage that's why it's it is insulator i need not to go deep into the basics of these uh, semiconductor theory so you all know this the amount let's uh, again understand that uh, this is the amount of energy which is required to get the uh, charge carrier out of the oxide layer uh, although it's very less but still the energy level difference between the conduction band and the valence band is 8 electron volt fine now let's come to the semiconductor that is silicon uh, already we have studied everything this is the amount of uh, uh, energy required to get silicon out of the out into the free space then that is the band gap energy between the conduction band and valence band you might have all mugged up in the, your uh, second year that this is 1.1 electron volt fine this is 1.1 electron volt in this you have studied the difference between the uh, insulator semiconductor and metal fine if you remember uh, in the metal the uh, conduction band and valence band both overlap fine and in the oxide layer they are very up far apart and in the semiconductor they are near to each other and for silicon it is only 1.1 electron volt so the so same thing which you have already st uh, studied and now let's see what happens when you combine all these three structure what happens with the uh, with the energy band diagram or with the help of energy band diagram let's see what happens to the mos structure that is more important what happens when you combine the uh, various systems for example uh, let's take an example of pn junction because you all know the pn junction that's why i am taking the example of pn junction fine a P pn junction diode fine so what happens in a pn junction diode what do you do you just join a p type material with n type material fine now when you join the p type material and n type material you all have studied in theories uh, that uh, uh, depletion layer forms fine and that depletion layer consists of built in potential fine that depletion layer consists of built in potential and that is the amount of voltage required to break this depletion layer and uh, start conduct and uh, and the charge carrier start conducting this is the built in potential fine you also call it as vbi all you also call it as vt the threshold voltage fine so what is this this is the built in potential and how why it is formed see there you might have already study about the theory that why there is a uh, uh, this uh, depletion layer here fine so as per the theory we know that there these are immovable ions which are depleted here but the reason why this depletion layer has been formed and across this depletion layer you have a built in potential the reason is that when the two systems comes together or when the two material let's talk about material when the two material come together then what happens the fermi potential please listen this carefully the fermi potential of both the systems the fermi potential of p type and fermi potential of n types 
they try to come together they try to align fine so where is the fermi potential of p type see this is the conduction let's talk about the p type system this is the conduction band this is the uh, valence band and this would be the fermi potential of what p type just a second let's choose yeah this is the fermi potential of p type and let's talk about the n type what happens in n type system in n type system you have again the conduction band the valence band and the fermi potential fermi potential now would be near to the conduction band i call it as efn fine let's see this is the difference between the fermi potential of p type and n type the p type would be closer to the valence band and n type it would be closer to conduction band now what happens when you join together join them together you join p type and n type then these fermi levels will try to align it always happens when two materials get joined their fermi potential try to align and when their fermi potential try to align then due to these energy bands these are what energy bands fine then when these form these fermi levels see what will happen now either this fermi level of p type will go towards here or why why with why they are going towards up to align or either the n type fermi level will go downwards and because of this this there is a difference of energy you can see there is a difference of energy there is a difference of energy will take place and due to that difference of energy this built in potential occurs this theory you might not study in any of the book uh because uh this is a universal theory that why when you combine two material then why there is a built in potential between two material because the fermi potential try to align and because of this fermi potential when they are trying to align with uh, themselves the and there is a difference of energy between them and that energy difference occurs at as a built in potential the same thing occurs with the uh, mos system fine the same thing occurs with the mos system let's see what is that yeah so the same thing occurs with the mos system let's see that this is your mos system this is your mos system fine so what happens when you combine all the three things let's see in this diagram you combine metal oxide and silicon now what happens the fermi level the fermi level of metal the fermi level of uh, you don't have any fermi level here because there's no chance of electron uh, or uh, charge carrier appearing anywhere between the conduction band and valence band so you don't have any fermi level in the oxide fine and there's a fermi level in the silicon so what will happen these fermi level will try to align let's see in the mos structure this diagram this fermi level c this is the fermi level of metal what i have told you that whenever two materials two materials first material second material and third material here you are having three material the silicon the metal uh, the oxide the silicon oxide and the metal so when the three materials are joined together then their fermi level got aligned if you can see the fermi level of p type semiconductor the fermi level of the metal they got aligned and because of this alignment what will happen because of this alignment the bands the energy bands which is conduction band the intrinsic semiconductor band and the valence band they got bent downwards at where on at the surface why does happen this has happened because of the alignment of fermi level i'm repeating this is a very very important concept 
as far as VLSI is concerned because you will not read these type of concepts in your electronic circuits courses fine this concept is very very important I am again repeating that when you combine more than two materials two or more than two materials then what happens their Fermi level align with each other look at the Fermi level of metal look at the Fermi level of silicon they aligned each other they aligned each other see they align and because of this alignment what happens at the surface the energy bands which are associated with the silicon they got banded downwards and why downwards I'll tell you why downwards I tell you and because of movement towards downwards towards down what what, what has happened a surface potential has been appeared how do I know that there is a surface potential because the difference between see what was this if you remember what was this this was Fermi potential if you remember in the initial uh, uh, in, uh, in the in, uh, in the lecture initially I told you what is Fermi potential the difference between intrinsic semiconductor intrinsic level and the Fermi level of p type semiconductor now look here what happens what has happened the difference between the intrinsic level and the Fermi level has reduced where at the surface why to align I'm again repeating to align the Fermi level of metal and the Fermi level of silicon the bands at the surface banded downwards this is known as band bending this concept is known as band bending fine now the question arises why they became downwards let's see it will be cleared from this structure why they came downwards what happens just a second I'll clean up all this mesh what happens uh, when you combine all these materials then this Fermi potentials try to align fine now the metal the form the, uh, the uh, in a metal the Fermi level or the conduction band they are fixed you might have studied that the conduction band the valence band these things are only for the uh, semiconductor these are not for the metal so all the le energy levels which are present in the metal they are fixed but the energy level in the semiconductor they are flexible if you have seen just now I have told you that when you dope it with P type the Fermi le energy level goes down intrinsic Fermi energy level goes down when you dope it as n type the n Fermi energy level goes up fine so the energy bands in silicon are flexible and because of this what happens the when you combine all these material then this Fermi level will align with this Fermi level so what will happen this Fermi level will move upwards please listen carefully this Fermi level will move upwards and they got aligned and what will happen with the, uh, these levels the conduction band, valence band, intrinsic band in the bulk see this is the surface because this is oxide this is oxide this is oxide fine and this is silicon so what is this this much amount of area is surface so at the surface what happened the intrinsic uh, Fermi level the intrinsic Fermi level bends downwards the conduction band bends downwards the valence band bends downwards why because the Fermi level is moving upwards to align with the Fermi uh, align with the Fermi level of metal fine so they bend downwards and the bulk the levels energy levels in the bulk that is EC EV they all remain same if you can see that here also here also in the structure itself if you can see the uh, EC EV they are same here no difference but at the surface at the surface the intrinsic formulable intrinsic formulable banded towards the 
form it uh, towards the valence band fine so this is known as band bending so in limited words you just remember that why the band bending occurs band bending occurs because when you combine one or more material the fermi potential of these material try to align fine and due to alignment of this fermi potential band bending occurs fine so this was a very important concept as far as vlsi is concerned now let's move forward uh the amount of energy which is required to make this to make these energy bands flat flat as was as they were original flat like this the amount of energy required to make these bands flat is known as flat band potential phi fp is known as flat band potential fine so what i'll do i'll uh, this is known as flat band potential please remember this again i'm repeating what is flat band potential the amount of energy required to make these bands flat make these bands flat means this is something which is built in as with the pn junction i have explained you in the pn junction why the why there is a built in potential here because of joining these two materials now because of joining these three materials a built in potential occurred at the surface now to remove this built in potential to remove this built in potential some energy needs to be applied so what will happen then this energy bands become flat so the potential which is required to make the energy band flat is known as flat band voltage or flat band potential fine it is known as flat band potential flat band potential this is very important when we will calculate the threshold voltage of the cmos fine so you just remember what is flat band voltage fine what i'll do uh, i will do one of the uh, question which is given in the cmos gang the example 3.1 please remember example 3.1 so it's a solve question example 3.1 of cmos gang uh, there you will be able to understand what is flat band voltage fine so let's see fine so there you will be see what is flat band voltage fine so a lot of concepts i have discussed in uh, today's lecture uh, i request you all to don't get confused and do study the book uh, either the deva prasad das or you might you should study the cmos kang the cmos uh, vlsi design by kangs sungmo kang fine so uh, these are uh, some basic concepts it might be very new to you people but these are basic concepts of electronics uh, like flat band voltage uh, like uh, fermi potential like band bending all these things you should know fine and uh, from next lecture what i'll do i'll try to explain you what is flat band voltage and then we will go to various operations of a mos structure only mos structure not mosfet only mos structure we will now concentrate only on the mos structure then after that we will move towards mosfet the metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor now we don't have any field effect transistor this is not a transistor fine so what we will do in the next class we will study about the flat band voltage and the different operations of a mos structure mathematically fine and that's it about this uh, lecture uh, we will meet in the next lecture thank you very much